This is another of these interesting components that I bought just because I thought it'd be quite interesting to take a look at and wondered if the heater section could find other applications, even the whole unit. Uh, so this uh, is an aquarium heater. It's a 100 watt aquarium heater. And uh, this particular one I think came from WELTD 2013. But if you do a search for, I'm not sure if the SJ is important, but uh, 100W aquarium fish tank heater submersible water adjustable, then you'll find uh, listings for them quite cheap. So say £3.57, it's not that bad for the components, so to speak. So um, I've already managed to pull the adjustment uh, knob off because it, it looks as though the way they calibrate these is they probably turn this until they the, put it into a known temperature, turn it until it clicks on or off and then actually put this knob on and put it in the appropriate position because it grips onto the knurls then and once they click it in that will be it sort of calibrated. When you pull this end out, the cover off, it reveals a rubber seal. Now the, on the box it kind of shows this being fully submerged under the water. I'm guessing that's just so the thermostat gets a good indication but it just makes me wonder how watertight it will be up here. I suppose ultimately the fact it's jamming into uh, the glass tube will make it fairly uh, water resilient. Let's uh, take that brightness down just a wee tad. Um, and if you carefully ease round this, it takes a bit at first but you can pop it out and it reveals that this bit here, uh, for start at the bottom there's a little wad of what I guess is sort of rock wool type stuff, sort of fiberglassy just to sort of keep it from getting too close to the end. It's got the heating element, it's got the uh, bimetallic strip thermostat, and I'll show you this operating. If I uh, turn the little knob here, it's got a magnet to make sure it opens and closes decisively. And it doesn't take much uh, turning of the knob to actually make it click in and out. Uh, on the other side, there's a neon indicator and a little resistor, brown, green, yellow, 150k, but just with the wires twisted uh, on, and uh, then it goes out to what appears to be. Not sure if this is going to separate. It looks like a little crimps. Uh, hold on, I'm just going to try and tweak that out. It looks as though it's just a couple of little mini spade terminals that are going onto the heating element that connect onto the... Yeah, so that's just got two little lugs. And then the heating element itself has a sort of usual arrangement of twisted wires to mate onto the sort of uh, the uh, heating element wire itself. That is something I may have actually pulled off. I may have to crimp that back on again a little bit. Let us uh, crimp it right now by using the snips in an inappropriate manner. So let's just mush that down onto that. I don't think it would solder on. Again, it's going to get quite hot, so that's not necessarily going to be ideal. Uh, the heat element wire itself seems quite robust, more robust than I was expecting for something rated just uh, 100 watts. I thought it was going to be lighter than that. It makes me think you could actually use this little block as a heat element for something else. In fact, what comes to mind is, uh, I I'm not sure if it would work too well, the desiccant dehumidifiers because um, they require a sort of low wattage heater inside them. I wonder if that would work. Um, but um, it's interesting. Not really an awful lot to it. It's what you'd expect. It's mains in going through a thermostat inside the whole body of the thing and then just switching this little heating element and that's it. So um, it's fundamentally what you'd expect on the ceramic core. But if you imagine, if you had to buy a heater for something, a specific application, and it came in this ceramic core, this... In most industrialish applications, this alone would cost quite a lot. I wonder how reliable it would be in long-term use. It's intriguing. Uh, the other thing I was thinking was, if you used external thermal control, you could theoretically, because the heat element is right at the end, if you've got a cable gland uh, and a watertight sort of cable gland into the side of a container of water, and you inserted this into it through that cable gland so it was gripped in place, then it could be used as a sort of water heating element that, you know, with the electrical connections on the outside of a tank. Um, not really sure, I suppose, ultimately you could put it into the tank itself completely, but um, it just means that, you know, it would perhaps be easier to, in a sealed tank, it'd be easier to actually have it just going through a gland. It's just thoughts. This bit in here, incidentally, is just paper. I almost kind of like the idea of it without the paper. Uh, hold on, let's see what it looks like without the paper. So let's uh, push this into its little spade terminals.
much easier to go in is to get it out and slide that back in. Oh, I think that looks nicer, doesn't it? Uh, I think I've actually put that on the wrong way around, have I? Or is it going to open the... No, it is actually. The bimetallic strip is actually chapping against the side of the glass, which actually makes it a bit louder as a result. Um, I think that's okay. I think that might be what it's designed to do, just to limit its movement. It certainly clears the contact well enough. Yeah, it's interesting, it's nice, it's uh, easy enough to open and get into, and it's what you'd expect, thermostat heater, not much else to say. It comes with these little rubber suction cups for mounting it in the tank itself, but as a source just of components, it's actually quite interesting, it's a, a useful little device.